I'm Dr. Stacy Montgomery. I'm one of the ER and ICU doctors here at Dove Lewis. And today we're gonna to talk about tube feeding, specifically a cleft palate puppy. Um, the procedure for setup, how to identify a cleft, and then a quick demonstration of actually feeding these puppies. Um, these puppies aren't able to nurse because of the shape of their mouth with their cleft. And so tube feeding is really the only way to keep them alive. So you wanna use the largest bore tube that you can for the size of your patient because you're gonna be less likely to introduce this into the airway, into the trachea with a large bore tube. Um, but you also don't want it to be too big for the esophagus. So you kind of have to eyeball based upon the size of your patient and what you would expect for the size of their esophagus. So for our particular little puppy, we've got a 10 French red rubber. You want it to be a very soft tube, soft and flexible. Um, and you wanna avoid, if you can, cutting the tube. These are rounded and easy to introduce without any trauma to the esophagus itself. So if you can preserve this, it's okay to leave the tube long, but we're gonna measure and mark the appropriate distance from the mouth to the stomach so that you can use that as a marker for when you're introducing. You wouldn't be able to get beyond the lungs. Um, so if you can introduce your tube all the way to your marker easily, then you're more likely to be in the stomach rather than in in the respiratory tract. Um, we're gonna use formulated puppy formula for this friend. This is uh, as black and you can easily find calculations based upon the weight and the age of the patient for how much and how frequently to feed. You wanna warm it to room temperature. You never wanna soak it with water. Um, you wanna make sure that your formula is away from wherever you're warming it and you never wanna microwave it. Just like with human babies, you can put it on your wrist to test the temperature, and this is room temperature to slightly warmer, which is perfect for our patients. So we'll get the baby out and we'll measure, and we'll show you how to do that. This little one is a 12-day-old bully who was born with a cleft palate. Um, he was doing well at home with his parents, tube feeding him, but then he decided that he didn't want to eat for a couple of weeks or a couple of days so um, he's been admitted he's very dehydrated when he came in so he's on IV fluids with a jugular catheter and he's been tolerating his tube feedings well you want to make sure your babies are warm before you feed them so your measurement should be from the tip of the nose to the last rib so we're gonna measure his tube from here to here and you want him to be as straight as possible when you're taking that measurement. And sometimes you can just extend out their necks if they'll uh, tolerate it. This little friend um, does not have a cleft lip, but he has a cleft palate, which you may be able to see. It's a hard palate cleft. You can see that divot in the middle of his, of his face. Hi, babe. And you want to be, if you can, as accurate as possible with this measurement. So we're going to go right here for him. And you can mark your tube with either a Sharpie or with tape. Sharpies will wash off eventually, but I like to use them because you can adjust your marking using the same tube even as they get older. And then with these tubes, you have to cut the fat end so that it will fit on your syringe. He says, I'm leaving. You always wanna make sure that your tube is patent. And so we've got a few little drips in there, but you don't wanna necessarily flush any of the formula into the baby when you're placing the tube. Some people like to leave the tube on them when they're placing the tube. Other people like to take the tube off and then, or leave the syringe on when they're placing the tube. Other people like to take it off. I leave it on. Um, and you wanna kinda angle towards the left side of their body. Oh, you hate it. Hi. Hi. I know, we're gonna go in. I know, I know, there you go. And you're gonna see him do a little bit of gaggy, 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 and then eventually he'll swallow it. And once he swallows it, you can start to advance. Ugh, oh, take it easy. Good boy, here you go. And then you wanna listen for him making squeaky noises. 
because that means that you're less likely to be inside of the respiratory tract. And you can hear him. Billy hates it. And then you can also aspirate back on your tube. And if you get a bunch of air back, then you're probably in the respiratory tract. And I'm not getting any air back. So we're likely in his stomach. When they open up really big too, sometimes you can see if you're in the esophagus. Oh, he spit it out. Oh, he spit it out. Sorry, baby. Got it? Take a second. <laughs> so you can hear air moving in him. And we aspirate, no air, and then you just gently introduce that food. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll take that. And sometimes if they're really wiggly, you can also give them a finger to suckle at the same time too. And you want to fill their stomach slowly. Here we go, here we go. The suckle. That's nice, huh? And then when you're done, you always pinch the tube before you bring it out. And you just bring it up. Ugh. Ugh.